Good afternoon. Actually, good evening. A bit later today than usual. Um, welcome to my daily chat. I'll give you more information about what that is in a moment. But before I let me start with the titles, you know what I'm going to talk about today, and you can jump in when you're ready. Or even if not ready. Um, I've been on a theme. The talks lately are about looking at life through a spiritual lens. And today we're going to talk about the power of agreements as a key to self-esteem. And in fact, it's also a key to your own spiritual well-being. So this is going to be important for you to remember and learn about. So stay tuned. Before I jump into that, let me introduce myself so you know why I do these talks. And even though this is later than usual, what this is about. So thanks for being with me, by the way. If you want to comment, post, etc. down below, you can do so. If you want to say hi, you can do that as well. Um, thanks for watching. My name is Barry Selby, in case you haven't figured that out already. It's in the summer around here, it's my name. I am an inspirational speaker, love and relationships expert, a best-selling author of the book, 50 Ways to Love Your Above, excuse me, the author of the best-selling book, I always get it backwards, of the book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, for men and women, um, gay or straight, there's lots of stuff in there for everybody. And I'm kind of biased, it's a great book. Um, I'm also a bit of a, becoming more of a spiritual teacher because my spiritual training is coming through more and more because my, my, my mentors are pushing me hard to bring that into my talks. That's why I'm calling it living life through a spiritual lens because that's my strength. And I've been avoiding that for 800 and something broadcasts. So welcome to today's broadcast. Hi, it's Alice, nice to see my broadcast. Um, this is episode number 856. Oh, by the way, I started these talks over th almost three years ago. That's why so many of these. Originally called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring of Feminine Heart. But they've been abbreviated for a while now. And this recent spate, this, last, this is the fourth one in a row, of talks are called living life or seeing life or experiencing life through a spiritual lens. Hi, Catherine, nice to see you in my broadcast. Thank you for reaching from Germany and uh, welcome to my American broadcast, <laughs> even though I'm English. So today, um, being part four of this series of talks that I don't know how long it's gonna run, I know I've got at least another one tomorrow, but today I wanna to talk about the power of agreements. And how's that spiritual, you might be wondering. Um, basically it's spiritual because our connection to our spiritual fulfillment is a lot is tied a lot to our own ability to trust ourselves and I'm watching the path okay there I'm watching how it's gonna line up so when you keep agreements with yourself and when you make agreements the right way then by default your self-esteem and self-trust increase they go up you fill up your reserves of trust in yourself which is frankly something a lot of people don't do because they don't realize what the power is. So the power of keeping agreements is massive if you don't know anything about it. And if you do know anything about it, you know it's massive too. So I'm gonna break this down very succinctly and completely because I wanna keep this short because I'm actually, this is, this is a late broadcast. Usually it's at 5 p.m. Pacific time, usually in my broadcast, which is why it's dark out now, which is why the lighting looks a little different tonight. Um, but also I wanna get succinct because it's close to my dinner time. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep this succinct and tight. So let me get into this. There are many qualities to living a spiritual life. And I don't mean necessarily the woo stuff or the um, meditation practices, because those are all part of it too. But everyone has a spiritual practice that's different. So I'm not talking about your personal esoteric themes, whether it's gonna be chanting or beating drums or dancing or meditating or painting or walking, whatever that is. I'm talking about keys that you can use whatever your spiritual practice is. That's the beauty of this. It's applicable to everybody's life. And even if you're not spiritual, this will come in handy. So I'm giving you all sorts of excuses to not avoid this. <laughs> well, also reason why you want to focus in. So let me talk about this. Our ability to trust ourselves and our ability for others to trust us and our ability to trust other people, it's all tied together, is based upon um, the power and the effect of our word or our words. So let me say it this way. It's easier for someone to trust you and easier for someone to trust yourself it's easy, for, it's easy for someone to trust you and easy for you to trust yourself when you keep your word. When your word has value, when your word is important, when your word is accurate. Likewise, it's easy for you to trust other people, as you may have guessed, when you can trust their words, their actions, their deeds match what they say they're going to do. So when you say you're going to do something, you do it, that's keeping your word. That's integrity. And that's where you will build trust in yourself and where others will build trust in you as well. And when you build trust in yourself, your self-esteem tends to increase at the same time. It's one of those wonderful things where one you fix one, you get a benefit on the other side. So you fix, you start building your self-trust and your self-esteem goes up as well, without any effort, it seems. But the thing about it is most people are unaware of the agreements they're making. They're unaware of the words they're saying that are actually defining a way of a commitment to something they're not necessarily committing to. 
because whenever we open our mouths to say something, which I'm doing right now, obviously, sometimes we'll say things that we may not mean. Sometimes we'll say things that actually we don't realize the power of what we're saying is. So first of all, watch what you're saying. <laughs> in literally, I mean, observe what the words are you're saying, whether it's written in email or texting or what you say on the phone or on Facebook Live or in person. Be careful what you say because you may start committing to things that you may either one, not remember you committed to, or two, decide doesn't work for you. Making agreements is one of the biggest pieces of keeping agreements, as strange as that may sound. But the thing is, we have a bad, we have a, we have a tendency, when I say a bad habit, we have a tendency, yes, you refuse to avoid this. Right, thank you, Catherine. And by the way, so Facebook Live, as I mentioned, so if you're watching on YouTube, you won't be able to see the comments. If you're watching the replays, the comments will be below and you've got to sort through to find them. So just so you know. So the thing is that with agreements, there's the overt ones we make. Like you tell your partner, you're going to be there at a certain time. That's an agreement. That's a commitment. That's a statement of what you're going to deliver and produce as a result of what you said. And when you do keep that, your partner trusts you more, you trust yourself more, and you're all happy, ideally. If you say you're going to be there at a certain time and you don't show up, then one of a few things can happen. One thing is your partner will lose trust in you. Two, you'll lose trust in yourself. Three, you may lose your relationship because you may have done it too many times. And four, your partner may stick around because they're not willing to stand up for themselves. Thank you, Catherine. Absolutely, yes. Hi, Nancy. Nice to see you in my broadcast. So this understanding that we have a distinct ability to control our domain and also how to express ourselves in the world so that our relationships improve and our own experience in the world improves comes down to the ability and the um, the reminder to keep those agreements. Agreement keeping sounds so simplistic, it sounds so mundane, but the power of keeping agreements and again, making agreements accurately is a game changer for some people. So let me give you a couple of pieces of the puzzle too. So agreements you keep, some of them are defaults. Like when you get in the car and start the engine, you agree by default to stay on the right side of the road. If you're in America, on the left if you're in England. But also you, you agree to stick to the speed limit. I'm sorry, you may not agree with that, but by getting in the car and starting the engine and going, that's what you're doing. So when you break those agreements you've made, you may get pulled over by the police or you may get in an accident, something else may happen. But even beyond that is you've actually violated your own agreements. And it sounds, again, these are simplistic things I'm saying here, but it's functional when you understand the power of this. When you realize that sticking to the laws that you've agreed to by driving a car, for example, or the rules you've decided to go to when you go to work, that you keep agreements with your boss that you show up on time. When you don't, their trust in you goes down as does as your trust in yourself. Now, for some people, they have no desire to be, um, what's we're looking for? confined by agreements. But the thing is, some people think the way they don't get confined by agreements is to simply violate them. And that doesn't work. Because when you violate your agreements, it's, it's like putting, putting a pin in a balloon of your self-esteem. It's deflating your own self-esteem. And it again affects the people around you negatively. If you really, if you really want to um, refrain from keeping agreements, don't make any. <laughs> it sounds so simple, but so many people miss this point because a lot of people are trained to think they've got to be um, approved of. So they've got to be, and there's another piece, there's a whole other topic, by the way, about approval. I'm not going to go into that one now, but this piece I'll say, if you are someone who is driven to keep agreements because you want the approval from other people, that's a trap. Because again, you're tying yourself to somebody else's approval, which is a negative and limiting and um, victimized position. Talk about the victim of the human yesterday. So I recommend watching that broadcast if you didn't see that talk because I spoke a lot about how we can get out of victimhood yesterday or the day before. There's been a blur of talks. So again, watching the last three talks as well as this one are going to help you with getting a better understanding of your own ability to live well in the world from a spiritual lens. So agreement keeping, let me give you another piece of that. So let me give you some of the te the, the cornerstones, the, the, um, the elements of agreement keeping that will absolutely support you. So again, if you don't want to keep your agreements, don't make any. That's the simplest, basest bottom line you can do to avoid violating your agreements. Because if you don't make any agreements, there's nothing to violate. 
Again, as I said earlier though, oftentimes in our conversations we'll say things that are actually agreements without us realizing we've done it. So definitely watch your words. Watch what you write, watch what you say, because you may be saying the things you'll commit to something, like someone says something, you say, sure, meaning you've actually agreed to what they asked of you, but you don't really think you did. Then it's good to follow up and say, did you expect me to deliver that, make that happen? Because if they said yes, you can either renegotiate or follow through. So part of the agreement keeping, there's actually a three, four, three, I think. I'll give you the pieces that help you keep your agreements better. So one of those, as I mentioned, is don't make any. As in, if you don't want to keep agreements all the time, make fewer ones. And make the ones you, and and as a second part of that, make your agreements important enough so you write them down, you make note of them, you remember to do them, and you keep them going. Put them in your calendar, whatever you need to do. This confirms, supports your trust in yourself, which again, increases your self-esteem. Another thing about agreements, because you're making them important, you're writing them down. Actually, I've given you all three in one bundle here. So make fewer agreements, make them important, write them down. That's three. There's another one as well I'll get to in a minute. When you write them down, not only are you putting them down to remember them, but you're actually anchoring that content in your body because the physical act of writing with your hand is actually creating a neural pathway in your mind that anchors into that, that agreement. So you're, you're actually embodying it in your body because you've taken it in through the action of writing. I'm not sure if it works the same way with keyboards, but certainly when you're writing by pen, it's anchoring something in your physical body. So keep the agreement, it makes it important. So make your agreements important, make the fewer agreements, um, write them down, there's two more. Uh, another one is say no, which I said before. Again, saying no is what you can do to rescind your agreements, say no. But the other one as well is, well, I'm gonna say it this way. Some people are stuck in the black and white arena, meaning that they have to get the agreement or they're gonna violate it. What they fail to, fail to realize is there's a third option, which is to renegotiate. If you're in an agreement with somebody, even if you're agreeing with yourself, and you want, need, or desire to change it, then have a conversation with that person or with yourself. Yeah, it sounds silly, but with yourself. Because if you have an agreement you want to keep, you need to postpone it by a day because you realize you're too busy, or you need to change an, agreement, an arrangement to be healthier for yourself. Hey, Heidi, I see my broadcast. I trust you're well. By having this understanding in your agreements and making them important enough to negotiate or renegotiate, it means that you both parties involved, whether it's you and yourself or you and somebody else, come to a better understanding of each other, which makes that agreement even easier to maintain. Now, if the other person doesn't want to change the agreement, that can be a different problem. But at least you're asking and having the choice to make that happen. So, yeah, <laughs> I know, Catherine, some people have forgotten how to write. That's the problem with keyboards and the smartphones and everything else, is handwriting has gone out the window. And to be honest, mine's trashed anyway, so I can't... I can't um, um, what's the word looking for? I can't claim to be, that makes it simple, to be a good handwriting person. That's just the way it is. Um, but I was like that in school too. So, and I like to, I learned how to write handwriting in school badly, so that's my thing. Anyway, back on track. <laughs> Illustration there for a moment. So agreements are a tool. They're a vehicle to increase your trust in yourself. They're also a tool to increase your ability to have self-esteem. As I said in the title, these are keys to, to looking through a spiritual lens or life, living life through a spiritual lens. This doesn't sound spiritual, I understand, but it really is a spiritual understanding because what happens is you're increasing your own relationship with yourself, you're understanding your own support of yourself, and you're creating a much more healthy... Um, hey, Katie. <laughs> Long time no see. <laughs> um, so by keeping agreements, you're transforming your experience with yourself. And having that love relationship with yourself creates a better, harmonious, and more filling experience of life for yourself as well. So I hope this is making sense to you. This is one of the teachings that I do in my coaching. It's also, well, hey, yes, I love seeing you too. It's so good to actually hug you and connect with you in person. And maybe tomorrow, I was talking to Gina today about maybe coming to Agape tomorrow. So um, um, I'll message you guys over social media since I don't have phone numbers. Um, but maybe come to Agape tomorrow, it'd be fun. And I'll see you. So if you can, you can. If you can't, maybe you'll get together in the afternoon before you fly back. Anyway, that's a sidebar. Finishing up this talk. <laughs> Missed you later on this afternoon. <clears throat> so my invitation to you, my recommendation is to take the notes I mentioned in this talk, the five things to keep your agreements more healthy, because then when you increase your agreement um, success, either making fewer or keeping the ones you have, you raise your self-esteem and you raise your self-trust. And those are, are keys to having a spiritual life. Trust me, it works. So I hope it's making sense to you. You're welcome, you're welcome Catherine. Um, I hope that this has been of inspiration to you. 
If you want to get my help, I'll put a couple of links in the comments for you to get some support from me. One of which will be a contact form because if, as I'm putting out this more spiritual teaching, which is really fundamental, living life more successfully in a more successful way, that was clear, then I don't have anything on my website to promote that and support that stuff. So, hey Gina, nice to see you. I haven't seen you for a long time. Thanks for being in my broadcast. Um, so I'm gonna put a link in the comments, which is gonna be a contact form. Simply a contact form. We can write in there what you like help with, and I'll message you back and we can find our way to talk. So that'll be barrysober.com forward slash contact. Um, I'll also put a link in the comments to my book because I did mention it at the beginning. And I'll also put a link in the comments. Um, this is something I promoted today earlier, and I'm just going to let you know verbally if you want to do grab a chance to this. Because yesterday, and this, this is what came through in my meditation, yesterday was my um, my parents, would have been my parents' 66th anniversary. Um, so I basically um, offered to my friends a special what single session coaching, private coaching for 66 bucks. It's a bargain deal. I'm doing it in an honest, my parents, my mom passed away in 2012, my dad's still around. But I thought I'd just do something based on that number because it was like 66 is a cool number. So I put a I put a link out. So basically that contact form I'm gonna put in the comments, again, barrysober.com forward slash contact. You can message me through that. So if you wanna grab one of those, let me know and I'll send me email the links. So you can sign up for that. Um, what else is there anything else on this? I'll put my usual link to have a chat with me if you're having relationship challenges, because I do help with that. Um, that'll be in the comments as well, which will be barry.selby.com forward slash chat. My book is barry.selby.com forward slash book. <laughs> it, sounds, sound, it sounds ridiculous saying it that way. But I'll put the links in there physically so you can check them out as well. Um, if you have questions about this broadcast, please put them below. I'll respond when I sign off. And if you haven't seen my broadcast before, um, you've been missing out. I've done 855 of these before this one. This is my daily broadcast, usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time. I did it later today because I was out playing with friends in real life that I hadn't met, who were on, I met through some social media groups, which is why there's some interaction going on here. If you um, want to catch my replays, so first of all, if you want to catch me live, 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page where I usually do it, although today was later, so be it, but every day I do go live on personal page, which is Barry Selby on Facebook, you can follow me here. If you go to my business page on Facebook, you can watch the replays, which is uh, Barry Selby the author, you can uh, like my page and follow them there. Although I'm discovering that less than half of them are living there. Most of them, it's like after a certain period, I guess they get dropped. It's Facebook's feature, indeed. But thankfully, I have them on YouTube. So if you go to my YouTube channel, I have a backup of all my broadcasts from one to now. And if you go to, that's, uh, my channel is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. Again, if you want some help in this area, reach out, get support. If there's got any questions about this, please put them below. And I do recommend that you watch clarify and keep your agreements clearly because it raises your own self-trust and self-esteem as I said it's a fundamental tool to live a more spiritual life now I'll be back again tomorrow I have another topic to talk about I've got another one in the list that came through so that'll be my fifth talk on this theme maybe or longer we'll see and with that I thank you for watching um, if you have any questions reach out I appreciate you being with me as always and uh, again this is the intention to help you live a better life to me be, be more fulfilled that's my message to inspire and awaken you Thanks for being with me. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. Take care. Bye.